Hello everyone, this is Stefan coming to you once again from inside the doghouse. So over the past week or so, the last of my purchases for 2022 have come in. Um, unless I, unless someone contacts me about a collection and I end up buying it, uh, this will be it for, for my purchases for the year. And uh, there's some really good stuff in here, so I decided to make a video about it. And um, there's a few themes. I've divided it up into different sections. And I'm going to start with the um, with the nicest stuff and the ones that are going straight into my PC, the ones I'm just the most excited about. And the first one is Marvel Mystery Comics 82. And this one has uh, is a famously the first appearance of Nomura. Uh, there are only like 50 copies in, in total in the census across all grades, something like that. I, I could be off by a couple, but it's it's right around there. And um, it's just a, a fantastic comic. The comic that I regret selling and moving on from the most um, through the years is a Marvel Mystery Comics that I had before. And so that one is going straight into my PC. I'm keeping it. I know I'm going to re really regret it if I... I move on from it and so so that is definitely a keep comic just love that stuff uh next up is uh is a stan lee signed x-men number four 6.0 um and this one is is basically um i bought it like i've had a copies of x-men 4 before and slightly higher grade but this one is signed by stan lee and anytime you can get a major key uh, signed by Stan Lee. It's a good thing to hang on to. And for this one in particular, Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, it has definitely a lot of potential for X-Men movies coming up. It's not why I got it, but <clears throat> but in terms of keeping your value stable and, and uh, knowing that you're going to be okay with it in the long run is a big thing right now, especially with the drops in the comic market. And on the theme of Stan Lee's signed books, uh, Stan Lee signed Iron Man number one. I've never really understood why this book, um, like it, I know it's first Iron Man in his own title, but in terms of value, like it, it was always sitting fairly low. It's it's increased quite a bit lately. But if you count the Tales of Suspense books, this is like, you know, the 60th appearance or whatever of, of Iron Man. So he was around for quite a long time before this came out. So, but, you know, again, Stanley signed, not going to complain. Um, decided to pick up another one of these. I've had lower grade copies before. This is a pretty nice one. Uh, Marvel Spotlight um, <clears throat> number five with, um, <clears throat> with the first Ghost Rider. And it's a 5.5 copy, so still pretty affordable. It's, uh, again, a nice comic to have. And this one, I... I it was not on my radar at all. I'm going to be completely honest. And then when I looked at it, and, and there's such, like, it, it's kind of scarce. Um, and the reason, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll show you the book <laughs> before going on with it. Um, so the reason, like, this isn't, you know, a huge comic by itself, like a Daredevil 183, but it, it's signed by both Stan Lee and Frank Miller, and it's a new stand. And when you look in the census, like, there's like almost no copies that are like this. Um, even at a 9.6, it's a great one to have, and it's, like, hideously expensive. I paid probably far too much for it, but that's, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> And this, I had no plan whatsoever of bidding on, and I ended up doing it because I, I like Middleton's art in general, but I wasn't sold on this kind of green tinge for Vampirella. Uh, it was a 9.9, .9, which is, you know, awesome. It's a Scott's Collectibles exclusive cover, fine, so that, you know, brings the amount around uh, down quite a bit. So signed by Middleton, Middleton which is, you know, who is one of my favorite artists, um, and a 9.9 .9 copy, it kind of made me go for it. But I look at it, it's like, I don't even know how much I like that cover. So it's one of those ones where it's like, hmm. So those ones are definitely in my key pile and, and it's all good. The next ones are kind of interesting because it's part of the auction dynamic. First one is this X Men um, 7.5, X Men 10. I had an X Men 
uh, 10.8, 8.0, going up in the same auction. And both of them are sitting like so low and I was getting so frustrated and worried. I figured if I bid up the X-Men 10 a bit, then it would drive up the price on my eight and hopefully it would be overbid. And so I put in a bid like just to try to bump up the bidding a, a, a little bit on it. And um, and my book went for very little and this one went for even less. So it didn't work at all and I ended up with a book that I didn't want. <clears throat> but I'm not going to say no to, you know, an x 10 7.5. But I basically put them up for auction. By the time I paid the auction fee, I got nothing for the downgrade from an 8.0 to 7.5. So um, you play those games at an auction and sometimes you lose in that time I lost. Uh, one thing I kind of won on... And this is, you know, not in the theme of the other books that I was just showing, but this Canaan one. Um, I had an, a Canaan one that I sent in. It was actually a raw copy. It hit 9.8. I sent it in through a comic link. It hit their auctions like a year, a year and a half ago when the prices on it were really jumping. And this one... Um, I ended up getting for 100 US dollars less than what I got for the other one, even counting the auction fee. So I figured, you know what, um, I'm basically, by, by the time it's all done in the wash, I'm getting paid to have this book if I go for it. So um, so I ended up just picking it up and I really like it. Like, um, you know, first Ezra, for, like I, I like the Star Wars Rebels series. So I absolutely don't mind having that in my personal collection. Now, another one where I played the auction game and lost is this, uh, Batman Harley Quinn. I sent a copy in, I actually sent two copies in, uh, two 9.8s that I had. And so those ones uh, went for a set amount uh, like a couple of years ago. It was actually right at the start of, pan of the pandemic when I sent them in. And the price just isn't dropping. Um, if anything, it's kind of leveling and, and likely to go up. So I figured, you know what, I'm just going to bite the bullet and accept that I lost doing this. Um, so I was fine with that. And then I opened up the package and I looked at the comic and it's just scuffed to crap inside the well, like all over it. Like I, I have to basically send it. And I sent in a, a note complaining a comic link. Like they, I, I, I see books or I get books from them that are scuffed or whatever. And it's like, well, whatever, I can take care of a scuff. I can use a product and try to remove it. But this is just crazy how much scuffing there was. Um, so it is what it is. Uh, they should have um, listed that and sent it in for reholdering uh, with the um, grade guaranteed. And I would have, I wouldn't have minded having to wait for the shipment because um, there's no way that should have been sold the way it was. But accidents happen, and that's the way it is. Um, last one for my PC is uh, Spider-Man 606. I have a copy of this, um, but it's the Apple something Apple uh, variant uh, where it's kind of black and white for part of it. So this is the regular cover. So uh, I really, really like this cover. I wanted to have the book. So those are generally PC books. Now there's a few crack and resub books that I bid on. <clears throat> the first one is an ASM 238. ASM 238 is another book I, like I lost on majorly by massive amounts of money because I sent in my 9.8 copy at the start of the pandemic and it underperformed and then it shot up by like a couple thousand bucks. So <clears throat> I'm never going to make that money back. But this copy, I bought it as a crack and resub. Um, as a newsstand copy, it's worth doing. I have to check the values again to make sure that it's still worth sending it in. But when I when I inspected it and I first opened it, it looked like the flaws were pressable to at least a 9.6. And this one is the another 606. You might be saying, well, why did you bother with this? It's such a small book. It's not worth the crack and resub. This is the 399. Uh, variant. And so this variant is actually pretty rare and I got a good price on it. And um, it goes for like stupid amounts of money if it um, if it hits like 9.8 especially. And so I'm looking at that and it's like, you know, there's looks like some fixable flaws too. And this 252 um, 
The Spider-Man 252 is also a new stand edition. This one I have to check a little bit more carefully. The other ones are pretty much slam dunks that if I get a grade bump, it's worth resubmitting. Um, this one I have to see where it's uh, where it's kind of sitting. New stands typically are holding value a bit better, so I think I'll be able to crack and resub and hope to get a 9.6 or 9.8. But if it doesn't work out to, to make sense, then I'll, I'll keep it the way it is. So the last three books that I got are just um, three different uh, Strange Academy ones. Um, like a lot of people, I'm, I'm bullish on this book. I think that um, these are all variant covers. Like the, the cover A is almost impossible to get at auction now for anything um, reasonable. Um, with all of the first appearances, there's just a whack of them in there. And, and the Marvel universe you know looking to expand it makes sense that they're going to focus on young characters who they can get young actors to sign like 10 15 20 year x number of movie deals um and and take the franchise or the, the marvel cinematic universe into the next uh, level into the, into the next stage and so a lot of people are thinking strange academy is is just a logical like all, all it takes is one of those first appearances to to pan out and it's going to become huge. So I, I got uh, picked up a few of the variant covers because I had some extra money left over from the books that I that I sent in. So I figured, well, why not? Um, I'll get some Strange Academy. So that is it. Uh, it was a great year of of comic collecting for me. Great year of buying. Um, a little bit jittery with all the the price drops on a lot of my books, but for the most part, I was smart. Um, not for all of them, but for most of them, I was smart on on how I bought them. So I, even with the price drops, I'm still okay. So um, if if I don't make another video, it's a big if. I I still might between Christmas and New Year, but on the off chance that I don't, have a great holiday season, rest up, happy collecting, and uh, I'll catch you all next time.